Please welcome Rob Davis. Good evening. I'd like to talk about two simple things. One is wonderful, a change in society faster than the rate of growth of the internet. And one is horrible, a global crisis that threatens our food systems. My name is Rob Davis, as you've heard, I'm director of Media Innovation Lab at Fresh Energy. We're an independent energy nonprofit based over in St. Paul. And last summer, we started a public education campaign calling for bee and butterfly food to be planted on solar sites. Now, we're talking about photovoltaic solar, that's PV solar, looks like this. The panels are the most, most common you see, and they don't get much hotter than a car parked in the sun. So that wonderful thing I mentioned, here is the rate of change, here's the data showing the rate of change for solar energy, mobile, and the internet. But then in 2009, you'll see solar's right up there, but then in 2009, something really interesting happened. Solar got cheap. And it's getting cheaper and cheaper every single day. Minnesota is on the cusp of our own rapid growth in solar power. And that's partly because of some smart public policy that says we should get more of this local clean energy. Now, you've seen solar in the media. I like this picture from Southern California. Usually looks like this. But in Minnesota, we're proposing a solar future that looks like this. <laughs> okay, um, solar actually does perform better in colder temperatures. And you don't have to be Laura Ingalls to know that prairie plants do pretty well in Minnesota despite these conditions. So uh, who eats fruits or vegetables or the animals that eat fruits or vegetables? All right, well, my friends who like to eat. Pollination is important. It's, it's, in fact, necessary for one-third of all the food that we eat, even the bizarre foods. And uh, unfortunately, the situation for pollinators is quite dire. Since the 1950s, we've lost more than 50% of our honeybee population. And recently, we've lost nearly one billion monarchs. Experts tell us that the number one issue facing pollinators is loss of habitat. So, we know the problem, loss of habitat. We know the solution, build more habitat. What will it cost? Will it cost too much to build pollinator habitat on all of these solar sites? Let's, let's get some help with this question. Hey Siri, could you calculate the cost difference for using a pollinator-friendly seed mix on all these solar sites instead of using gravel? Oh, thanks, Siri. It is important that we create more habitat for our pollinators. Wow, Siri, I had no idea you were so passionate about this issue. Yeah, let's just say that it's kind of a family thing. <laughs> All right, seriously, this is actually quite simple. This is quite, quite simple. All of these sites will have a vegetation management plan and we're simply calling that instead of the industry norm of using uh, a gravel or a turf grass, that they use a biodiverse mix of prairie plants that are shade tolerant and low growing. We know that it's possible because it's already common throughout the United Kingdom and throughout Germany. So this is a solution that doesn't just help pollinators, it helps build topsoil. And those prairie plants take the water right off of the solar panels and channel it right down into the aquifer. You know, what can you do as an individual, I guess? What can you do as a company, as an organization? Can you build a pollinator garden? Yes. Oh, you can also call for solar sites to be planted with biodiverse habitat, like Anderson and Audubon already have. This solution is, a, is one that scales. In fact, in 2016, Minnesota will build solar sites on land equivalent to every single family home in the state getting a pollinator garden. And these land lease contracts are for 25 years. So for the tiny fraction of America's 280 million acres of farmland that farmers will choose to use for solar, let's maximize that benefit.
By helping the bees, we help crops, soil, and water. So, did you learn something? Smile or laugh tonight? Learn, smile or laugh. Retweet this. Retweet this. Share this message. This campaign is one example of the way fresh energy is helping accelerate America's transition to clean energy. Thank you.